Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, this is the In Wheel Time Car Show. Today, coming to you live from the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise Inn at Loopy Number 2 on US 59 I-69 Southwest Freeway between Shepard and Kirby. We have cars and car owners that love talking about their rides, and we think you'll enjoy hearing from them. We have a review of our new car of the week, the Dodge Durango SRT with the 707 horsepower engine. It's an SUV. Did I mention that? Uh, we look at the growing cruise in calendar. We'll have uh, this week in auto history and the stories making automotive news headlines. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show for Saturday, April 17th, 2021. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey, we need more Jeff Zekin, and the fabulous and making a rare appearance on today's show is the chief engineer of this program, Mr. David mm. Ainsley. Glad that you could join us today. It's a little bit on the chilly side. 61 we had a cold, degrees. Yeah, we had a little cold front come through finally uh, after uh, an entire week of rain. And it's a little cloudy. We've got a small group of cars here, but uh, we are glad that they are all here because we're going to talk to them now. Mr. Mars, who's our first guest here? We talk about them, obviously, whenever they pull in the, into the lot here. But the one that really got everybody's attention was this blue 67 Corvette sitting uh-huh. out here. And Mr. Chet Babin is the gentleman that's fortunate enough to be driving mm-hmm. that, and he is going to share everything he knows about that car. Oh, Chet, <laughs> I'm a fellow car, Corvette owner, oh, but wait, I don't have a 67, and I assume that that's a big block with side pipes on it. Yeah, there's no other Corvette. There's no other Corvette. <laughs> it's the only Corvette. Yeah. Got to have a Stinger hood. Yeah. Yeah, the Stinger hood. I love the car, and I love the color, and I might love you. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Not going to get this Corvette. No. <laughs> so what, what color is that? So that's called Lindale Blue. Lindale Blue. It's kind of a silver blue. Mm-hmm. I think that's a one-year-only color. Yeah, and, and that that is so classic for 1967. Maybe not all of the cars – the C2 cars were that color, but those that were, they were very popular back in the day. Yeah. It's a um, stunningly beautiful car. Uh, is, is it all original? Give me the background on the car. So it's mostly original. Um, all the major components are original. So that's, it's a no-hit body, um, all original fiberglass panels, original tinted glass. Uh, oh, well, that, the rear end option, transmission, yeah. yeah, tinted glass was an option. Transmission is uh, manual? Yes. Manual tra- four speed? No other transmission. That's it. <laughs> and uh, that's original a, matching number engine? Well, the matching numbers, but not original. The block's not original, but it is a correct date clo- coded block. Gotcha. But okay. The, but the heads, intake, carburetors, uh, everything else is original. Did you soup it up or? Um, a little bit. <clears throat> the uh, I bought it 13 years ago, and then I've had since then had the engine rebuilt. Um, it is mostly the factory specs. <clears throat> the cam's just a little bit stiffer. A little yeah. Hotter. So I. So got, is that is that a is that a, a triple carb? Yes. It is a triple carb. No other induction system. <laughs> of course not. I, I got it. That is the perfect Corvette. <laughs> right. It's got the triangular, that's, that's what he said. triangular <laughs> air cleaner on it, and uh, I believe that engine's rated at 435 horsepower from the factory. Yeah, so that was the solid lifter. The highest <clears throat> hydraulic lifter was 400, and that's what this engine oh, okay. was. Okay, okay. was. Also a different set of heads. This has round port um, heads, and the 435 was square port. 435 was really built for higher RPM. It's more of a racing application yeah. and the round port is more your mid-range which is street okay but on this one uh, it's a little bit stiffer cam and uh dynode it was 445 horsepower and four so eight, you did four okay for torque. yourself is what you're saying <laughs> yeah i mean you know you need a little torque and 3300 pounds yeah and, yeah just, you just need I that <laughs> if you're like me you well, don't need just that. in case i have to get around somebody right yeah <laughs> you have to make a high speed generally maneuver. i'm not behind anybody I'm, generally speaking <laughs> so, i would imagine so <laughs> So it was a factory side pipe car as well. It was not, but okay. um, there but you was found all of it. there was a guy that 
returned from the army. He wasn't in Vietnam, returned from the army in 72 and bought it. And he had it for over 30 years. And in the 70s, he added the side pipes. And he had a friend of his that his father worked for a GM dealer, and he bought the side pipes through his friend. So it's a GM side pipe setup. It's, it is. Yep. Uh, but since he added that in the 70s, I decided oh, it, to, it, it, to it, leave it. It's a great look Ooh. on the yeah. C2s. Yeah. I've always loved the side pipes. Um, and not that uh, that many of them had them. I don't think there was right. a, a very large number of them that had it, but it makes the car look correct to yeah. me the C, on the C2s. It's interesting. They're straight pipes, so there's no muffler. No in real it. muffler in there. On the, uh, the pipe on the side of the car is just kind of I just pinch. go crimps, crimps along it. That's it. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, that quiet and quiets it a and little did, bit. Did it did, with the new heads that you put on there? Did that change that setup at all? I mean, no, it matched right up with the uh, the exhaust system. No, it's the original, original heads. heads. Yeah, original. Oh, heads. the original heads. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were talking about that earlier. That's and right. I was a bit confused. Yeah. As so, I am more and more these days. No, no worries. Yeah. And how about the interior? So uh, it's a white interior. So it has the white stinger hood. Really. And the interior's original. I think it's just turned over 66,000 miles, so it's just now out of warranty. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, can't okay. take it back to the dealership anymore. Well, well I, I don't know that you'd want to because all the technicians would want to take it for a spin. I don't believe oh, yeah. I've ever seen a white interior on a C2 like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's a mo- different combination. Mostly black. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. it is. It's a different pa- color pairing on that. Yeah. Um, with, the white, with the white interior. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And air conditioning? No AC. But and I you did, kept I did, it that way. Well, when I was looking for one, I, uh, air conditioning is just more stuff to maintain. And right. so I decided against the AC. Yeah. And if you're going to have the only Corvette, then you might as well, well have it's got, the only Corvette. It's got Corvette. vent windows. So you just crank the That's vent right. windows all the way open yeah. and you get AC. Just shift yeah, another gear. Right so is it an M20 or an M22? So Transmission. it's M21, 20, I'm which sorry, is 21. a close race show. Right. So you can keep those RPM up right, right, when right. you're passing. When yeah. you're passing. For a high-speed <laughs> passing maneuver. So I uh, assume that you don't really get into it that often. <clears throat> uh, I've worked. Uh, I've had to do what Zora Duntoff called uh, heavy-duty testing. Heavy-duty yeah. testing. I do a lot of research. <laughs> I do a lot of research. Yeah. Some R&D, yeah, heavy-duty testing. Mr. Mars talks about his on-ramp acceleration tests yeah, that he does with new cars. Safety. I'm sure that you're about that. Yeah, safety issues. Right. Safety. Right. Uh, get uh, ahead of the traffic. Uh, I have a feeling that's the kind of car that you'd set the $50 on the bi- on fifty dollar bill on the dash and bet your friend sitting next to you he can't grab it (laughs) (laughs) pretty much you try and reach out and get that i'll hold you back you get it all you can have it yeah yeah so uh the wheels are not stock that's correct so those are vintage torque thrust d's okay which um the five spoke that you see that was so popular back then Mm -hmm. i think craig or ss were really popular but everybody copied them but um american racing came out with those first with that five-spoke yep. design, and uh, the D means for disc brake, so that spoke is notched to clear the brake caliper. caliper. Uh-huh. So it's four-wheel discs? So four-wheel disc. And wow. Four-wheel independent suspension. That all came out in 65. Right. Yep. Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize that the, uh, the 63 split windows didn't have the IRS in the back. It wasn't until 65 they so, went... So it did, but it had drum brakes. Drum brakes, I'm sorry. Yeah. That, was, that was the difference, was the yeah. drum brakes. So 65, they had four-wheel disc with standard equipment. I, I don't have any clue what they're doing out there. Uh, but we don't really care. No. Yeah. Is it sprinkling a little bit? Uh-oh. That's good. Thank you, David, for that. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, okay. Well, there's another one down there. Why don't you all yeah, look? do it again. Yeah, yeah. That's looking great. Thank you. That's great. And that's our sound guy that's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that's our chief engineer, David Ainsley. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we brought the speaker we and out of the rain. Yeah. So you put some, you put some miles on this. Yes, I, I drive it a fair amount. I used to drive it to work. I Did you? That attracted a lot of attention. Uh, and how yeah. far away was work? Not too far away. I worked at Greenway Plaza here. Okay. So. And you live in the area? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, um, so which is kind of what Loopy's is trying to do by opening up more of their restaurants so that the locals can bring their cars out that short distance that yeah. they want to. Um, typically, we were always out in a, at Katy, so they're going to probably move us around some of the different Lupes through town. Excellent. So. Yeah, that's great. There's yeah. a lot of you. Vintage, you wanted to car. meet us for a long time. Yeah, you, you're a good looking good group looking of guys. Are we? <laughs> yeah, we oh are. We even got dressed up for today's uh, public Don, appearance. Don wants you to adopt him so well, he can, he can uh, inherit your car. Now, actually, you know, I I have to say this that I I actually owned a '65 for a very short period of time. You didn't know this, and um, those cars, the C2s, are very unique unto themselves there's the c1s i had a 58 okay nice. then i had a 65 huge difference between the two. Oh yeah and then you move through the years and every every generation of corvette is very different yeah and uh it, it's it's funny because you don't think of things like that but they made significant changes between the c1 and the c2 mm-hmm. uh c3 probably well Probably not as much of a change between the C1 and the C2, but the, there's a significant change between them. Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then 67 being the last year for the C2 oh. as well, and then the Stinger Hood, of course. That's the that's the iconic look of, uh, of yeah. the C2 Corvettes is with the Stinger. You know, a lot of the uh, 65, 66 big block hood, a lot of people don't necessarily recognize what it is, but you see a Stinger Hood on a Corvette, right. you immediately know it. Back in the day... And I want to say this was about 1965 or so. McRobert Chevrolet, it used to be down on South Post Oak. A.J. Foyt eventually bought that dealership. But that's where I first saw and fell in love with a Corvette. I was 14, and it was that color. And it sat on the showroom floor with the doors locked. But, boy, I was in there with my eyes and nose up to that glass <laughs> looking at everything about that car. Yeah. And, and the and poor salespeople are going, quit wiping your greasy <laughs> forehead on the car. I'm sure that they were. But Dad was buying a car in there, so it was okay. They were nice to you. Yeah, oh, they yeah. were nice At least till, till they signed the But papers. it was that particular yeah. color and, uh, of their variation thereof and that body style that yeah. was like, oh. Oh, I want it. And that's where I started my passion for Corvettes. Nice. And so um, so congratulations to well, you, you for stealing my damn car. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, you know, and when you pulled in, I was going to Conrad. Oh, look, oh yeah. Look, look, look. He was like a three-year-old kid going, hey, there's my candy, my eye candy. That's exactly right. And you got to be proud because I'm sure that there are a lot of guys like me that are going, man, tell me all about your car. Yeah. Now, I, I I assume that that's – are you a member of a Corvette club? Uh, well, I used to be. Uh, well, we all used to be. Yeah. I used to be uh, – started off with a San Jacinto Corvette club, oh, okay. I think which was the original one here in Houston. This was way back at – way back in the 1970s. And then uh, we kind of moved from that and opened up our own club called Corvettes of Houston, which ultimately became a car dealership. Of, had no relationship. Wow. Uh, to uh, the car club but um, at any rate that was where I met Bill and Sharon Sites and all of that do you know the Sites Bill Does and it? Sharon Sites no it doesn't ring up they own the it. dealership right? they don't own the dealership Bill is a, an artist and does a lot of uh, uh, artwork real, real active car. in the Corvette club at yeah, one okay. point. yeah and uh, so anyway that's how my progression yeah. through the years of Corvettes I currently have an 01 okay sorry I know uh, it means no worries. No, it doesn't. It's n- I didn't know. They I'm built- not worthy. I didn't know they built them in 01. <laughs> yeah, because that's the it's only a, it's the only Corvette to have is a big block 67. <laughs> and see, this is why our, us Corvette guys like each other because we can we can do things like that and not get offended or be offensive or anything. It's all good. That was slick. It that was, was very slick. good. I like the way you kind of zip that right in there. It was very good. But off uh, of his head. So is this your only car that you have that, in the yeah, collection? Yeah, yeah. You, you keep it garage. Collection of one. You know. Collection okay. of one. Well, that's me. Cool, Got to cool start, start somewhere. Out, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, start let's, somewhere. Let's start with a '67 big block. Right? Yeah, and you don't really have a desire to have any other cars, do you? No, that's the no, only one. No, it's it's the, the only car. Yeah, the dream machine, man. <laughs> the, I, I'll tell you what. The, I, there are I, other cars. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally get it. Well, my my L one isn't anywhere close to that, but. Uh, 
It is my one and only, so yeah. we're going to keep it for a while. You don't have any airplanes or anything? Or? No, this okay. one flies pretty well. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it Low does. altitude. It Close enough. Does. Well, listen, it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you. Very Thank you. And we hope, we hope to see you again. I hope to see you all again. Yeah. Thanks okay. for inviting well, me. Thank yeah, you yeah, very no, much for stopping over. by and telling us about your car. Thank you very much. All right. All right um, you know, I know that we just did a, a review uh, last uh, uh, hour. And uh, it's time for another because I got I got to play catch up here. We, you know, and we, you know, when we do these remotes like this, we kind of lose track of time because we're so interested totally in the car. Can't help it. Tell me about your toy. Yeah, exactly. And then we get into that, and you know, go off into different directions and the other collectible cars that these guys have. All right, here on the In Wheel Time Show, it's time for this hour's car review: the 2021 Dodge SRT Durango. Now, the Durango comes in many uh, trim levels. It starts with the SXT, the GT, the RT, the Citadel, the SRT 392, and the SRT Hellcat. Uh, I had the SRT Hellcat all-wheel drive. This is a standard SUV all-wheel drive. Seats up to seven passengers. Uh, exchange, uh, exterior changes from last year, minor cosmetic differences, so not a whole lot has changed on the Durango that I had. Exterior features, sharp, smooth, sleek, body design, similar to the Grand Cherokee, actually, if you look at it from the side. Uh, front grille, good-looking and very symmetrical. There's nothing funky about it. Distinctive rear lighting, uh, kind of like the uh, Dodge Challenger in a way. Vented hood and scoop. Let you know this is a serious hot rod. Looks like the SRT part. Um, what could use improvement? I think advertising the merits of this midsize SUV because you don't see it advertised too much. But guys that know about it, they know about it. And they're into it, yeah. Interior highlights, sharp uh, Actually, the dash and excellent materials, it, it really comes together very nicely in this. Contrasting colors available depending on trim level on the interior. Uh, performance pages like the Challenger and the Charger. And it is standard four-wheel drive. So imagine spinning up all four wheels at the same time with the 707 horsepower. Woo-hoo. Cargo and trunk <laughs> room, uh, competitive with others in its class. What I liked about it. It's race-style design. Got that it, bulging hood. It's got a hood. real competitive look to it. It does. What could use improvement? Would like to see an updated instrument cluster. It's getting a little long in the tooth, but it works very well. Nice. I mean. Yeah, it is. 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8. 710 horsepower. 645 pound-feet of torque. All delivered through an 8-speed automatic transmission to four wheels. 6,200 pounds is what it'll tow. That's three tons, my friend, any way you look at it. Yep. Miles per gallon, well, 12 miles per gallon in the city. Highway is 17, and it for a combined of 13. And that sound that you hear is the Corvette pulling the away. The only car. Yeah, <laughs> the only car. I got 12.7 miles per gallon. Had to put some gas in it a couple of times. Uh-oh. What I liked about it, well, the power. What could use improvement? How could you improve on 707 horsepower? It's a nice the gas mileage? Okay. Nice. You buy a car like that, you don't worry about gas mileage. Ride and handling, all wheel drive, standard on both of the SRTs. This one, the Hellcat, and the 392. What I liked about it, the taut suspension, but not a buckboard. Oh. I mean, you know, these race cars with the big horsepower, they can get, uh, you know, a little stiff in the suspension. So. What I liked as far as improvement was nothing. Taught. That's what I said. Taught. I, I, like, I like the word. You know, 700 horsepower in all-wheel drive, you can get the power to the ground. Yeah. All-wheel drive. Can you imagine all four of those tires spinning up? I can. I did, didn't do did it, you? though. No, I, <laughs> I was going to say. No, mm, I did not. Explain that. I can imagine it. Base trim price is $80,995. Price is tested $90,315. The base price, if you just like the Durango, you can start on that for $31,765. Competitors, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk for 87 Ford. It's got the same 707 horsepower engine in it. The Audi 
SQ8, $89,000, and the BMW X5M for $105,000. Those Whoa. are the competitors, and that is the review of the Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat all-wheel drive. Thank you for listening, and thank you for being you, and thank you for joining us here on the In Wheel Time Car Show. At Loopy so, Tortillas. At, uh-huh. Is Mike on? On the Southwest Freeway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right here. <laughs> We're at this loopy tortilla this weekend. I stepped on him. You did. And, it, uh, you know, the one thing that you haven't done yet is finish your sentence. I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was slicker than a fireman's pole, I tell you. So we missed the events calendar last hour, so why don't we do that right now, shall we? Do you mind? No, not at all. Um, remember, tonight is the 7th annual de- annual. Seventh annual demolition derby at the Spit Waller County Fairgrounds. Woohoo! Ten dollar advance tickets. Too late. Fifteen dollars at the gate. Uh, Nifty fifties. I don't know if Randy's going to put it on tonight with uh, with what the weather looks like. Uh, the Kima Shark Car Show is tonight, weather permitting. Um, tomorrow, the Low Life First Annual uh, Car Show and and Drift Show. It's the speed, Low Life. Low Life. Mm-hmm. Speed Sport Racing Park. Hey, Don, you remember, aren't you? Of the low lives. Of the low lives. At yeah, the Speed Sports qualify. Racing Park in North Houston. And then uh, the fi- tomorrow night is uh, All-American Muscle Car at Kroger's at 99 in spring. And then also Sunday night is a Freddy Steak Burger at 1960 in Eldridge. Um, so that's that's kind of the events that are going on the, this week. And then uh, you want, want me to do calendar, which is next, yes, next I do. couple of weeks? I was going to inv- invite you to do that. So Sunday the 25th is going to be uh, the 27th annual Tomball Lions Club car show at Tomball High School. I think it, they've moved into the football stadium. May 1st, it, lots of stuff going on May 1st. Keels and Wheels, the 25th That's anniversary. That's the only thing going on That's May 1st. That's the only thing going on May 1st is Keels and Wheels. Uh, feature cars are uh, uh, first three-generation Corvettes. The Ferrari versus Ford uh, movie cars, and um, uh, and then you know of course they always bring all the wooden boats as well. But also on May first, if you're not going to make it all the way down to Kima, there is nothing else going on. That's right. Just like there's no other car than that '67 is, Corvette. Is, is the second annual uh, Springtown uh, Center Car Show on Kirkendall Road in Spring, and that runs from nine to three. And then the crawfishing cars at Second Baptist Church in Katy. <laughs> Everybody's got to have their own phraseology. Crawfishing so, cars. Crawfishing cars. You know, I don't know as if I'd want to. Uh, Go back into the car after I've eaten a whole lot of crawfish. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have. Because I think I have I've had that smell on my hands before. I have stunk up a few company cars by hauling, and this is years ago, hauling like eight bags of crawfish back <laughs> from Louisiana and just kind of threw them in the trunk and threw like ten bags of ice on top of them. Oh, I had to get out of the car that like the week after because it stunk so bad. Oh, my God. Dude, I, I can't even imagine doing something like that. Oh, was, yeah, well, they were company cars. They were company cars. <laughs> well, what you need to do next time is you need to go and get a rent car and then do all the bags oh, of crawfish yeah. in the trunk and then turn it back in. Don't get me going on rent cars. I don't cars. do crawfish. Never had. If it. you can find a rent car, oh, it's hard to find them right now. Because do you know how much the they're getting for rent cars? Yeah, well, Angie was supposed to go to Phoenix a couple of weeks ago, and it was one eighty nine a day. A day, a Insane. day. And well, here in Houston, it's real. I've got a friend of mine had a wreck the other day, and uh, and Chase hasn't been able to find a rent car in Houston Correct. at any price because when pandemic hit last year, all the rental agencies dumped their inventory. Well, not only that, but you know, Hertz almost uh, went belly up, right? And so they sold off everything that they had. Now they're begging. For, well, all of the rent car agencies are begging for cars, and there's no inventory to give them cars. Nothing. There's nothing. Not any inventory anywhere. The dealer I go by coming into town. I've watched his the way he parks his vehicles to make it look like he's got some. I counted this morning. He's got seven Jeeps on his lot, four Wranglers and two Gladiators. That's all the new Jeeps he's got. But and if he, you are looking for a new car, you probably want to go to Bayway. That's it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've got great inventory. You just got to show up and pick the one you want. That's exactly right. Uh, our Bayway is our new sponsor, and we welcome them to the show. And we are going to play one of their commercials right now, as a matter of fact. What a segue. Beautiful. It is. You know what's a segue? About three pounds. Oh. A segue. It's it's an old joke. 
<laughs> Very old joke. <laughs> Apparently so, and I guess I missed and it nobody back in the day. Either. Yep. But at anyway, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to have a, another guest who brought an absolutely fabulous car here. We're going to talk to him right after this quick break. Stay with us. When you're ready to shop Chevrolet, we know one that should be at the top of your list. Bayway. Locally owned by Houston, born and raised Daryl Wisniewski, Bayway brings a sense of family to your Chevrolet buying experience. When you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, you now have a place to go. General Manager Lincoln Stahl guarantees Bayway will beat any competitor's written price on the new vehicle you choose or pay you $1,000. Bayway Chevrolet is located only eight minutes from the Beltway and Highway 288. Whether it's online or in person, you'll be welcome like one of the family. BaywayChevrolet.com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, May 15th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Luby Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone's invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all at one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Lippy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, May 15th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, May 15th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy, weather permitting. Is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. 